Yes, the bag o' pucks <laughs> is back. Oh, uh, yeah. It is back. We are yes, two weeks away from the April 12th trade deadline in the NHL. So if you've never seen this segment, it's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah, count uh, yourself as lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good All one. Right. Thank you, Jackie. All right, I'm going to pull a puck out of this bag. Right. I don't know what's in here. And there'll be a player's name on the puck. You will tell me where you think that player could be going, where you think they'd be a good fit, really, okay. however you and want. And this is, like, right off the cuff. Right I don't off know, the cuff. I don't know what names are in there. Well, let's see what you come up with. All right. James Reimer. James Reimer. is a great one for you to get, each. Yeah, well, that is true. It's <laughs> true. I had a few comments about his play the other night, even though he ended up getting the win. Yes. Uh, James Reimer, for me, I, I think this... He's not going anywhere. Yeah, I don't I mean, I, I mean, Billy just mentioned it before, and I've been mentioning it since we started the season. You need extra goalies in yeah. your group, right? We've had that conversation a number of times. So, for me, James Reimer is not going anywhere. Carolina has Morazic hopefully coming back. They have Nedeljkovic has played well. And they've got James Reimer, who has a ton of experience. So, if something does go wrong, he's there to play. So, for me, he's not going anywhere. That's just my feeling, Billy. Yeah. Yeah, especially for a team that is making a legit playoff run, or at least hopes of a legit playoff run, right? Yeah. Like, why would they give up a goalie that may maybe it ends up being their third goalie, but they're going to need three, no question about it, over the run. So I don't see him. Now, we may, if we happen to pull another name out of the hat that's our bag that's a goalie, we could have some goalies from non-playoff bound teams moving, but I don't see a playoff bound team having that guy go. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that reportedly the Colorado Avalanche did inquire about James Reimer, which makes sense from their side. Yeah, from sure. From Carolina's side, you raised a lot of good points. Yeah, because if Morazic goes down or if they have another injury and there goes that puck yeah. gone with the wind. That's but, okay. Uh, all right. What do you got? Kyle Palmieri, who's ah. scored a few goals recently uh, for the Devils. Maybe Billy Jaffe should take that one first. All right, Jaffe, you're up. Be because there have been rumor, Bill, of Kyle Palmieri, the Boston Bruins, be interested. It would be a pure rental situation, no question about it, and he has done really well this year against the Bruins. I don't think EJ has had a fantastic season overall. This is not a high-flying, high-scoring club in New Jersey, but he's a good bet. He's got a great shot, plays inside, not the biggest guy, ending his $5 million a year contract. The question becomes is obviously what do you have to require to give up to get him as a as a rental? The other player, I beg you, the other team that I had written down is kind of like two other teams scratching it out. New York Islanders, one of them. We heard Elliot say that as well. And for some reason, I don't know, it's kind of like just throwing darts at there. I had Pittsburgh written down. Could he be the type of guy that Pitt adds somehow, some way, and all of a sudden they really build up three lines there i'm just saying it came to me and not a lot usually fires in this head of mine but i don't know i thought maybe it would don't happen. sell yourself short that's Billy. right you're a tremendous slouch don't sell yourself <laughs> short uh, exactly. <laughs> thank you very much um i would you know i think boston billy seems like the most sense because they've been looking for that second line additional scoring right and i know they kicked the tires on palmary last year as well and somebody that has yep. been kind of are on their radar so the fact that his contract expires at the end of the season I would think that would make him a little more affordable than having a year left and you know you'd want more in yep. return if you're the Devils that only the Devils know if they're going to make a big play to get him in the offseason um, and he could they could trade him and still make a play for him in the offseason and bring him back so the Bruins seem most likely to me the Islanders come to mind too but I think the Islanders are because Lee is a left shot I think if they want to go out and yep. get somebody, it would be nice to get another left shot guy, maybe like a Nick Felino, if he were to become available. I think he's, hey. a, perf I think he's a perfect fit That's... for the Islanders if he becomes available. But, but right now, the uh, Blue Jackets are still in the mix, so we will see uh, what happens there. You want to pick one? Sure, why not, Chuck? All right, let's just switch it up. Let's switch you know? it up. Let's switch it up. That's the bottom of the bag. What will okay, he get? Okay, what do we get? You tell me. Oh, okay. Well, this will be an interesting one. Oh, really? Okay. Matthias Ekholm. I feel ah. like things have changed around this player now that the Preds are in a playoff spot. They've won five in a row. Yada, yada, yada. Cap implications. Expansion draft looming. 
Yeah, you and you know what? That expansion draft thing should not be overlooked because, you know, you pick up a player with a year left on his deal, and particularly a defenseman, it can create an issue for you of who you protect, and you may have to expose him, and then you lose him in the expansion draft. Why did you trade for him in the first place? Right. I think that uh, Nashville has gotten back into it. He is an important piece of the puzzle. Based on the fact that they are they are in the mix right now, Billy, I'm keeping him in Nashville, and I still think that he's someone that he's got another year left at an affordable contract. He's somebody that can continue to be in Nashville for next season and beyond if they want to re-sign him. So, for me, I'm not all that eager to trade Matthias Ekholm. I would give you the 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 back end of that is if somebody wants to blow your doors off with a trade offer if you're David Poyle you probably have to consider it. Well everyone's got a price. Yeah that's true. I mean Gretzky got traded right. Yeah. They all get, can get traded but for me uh, I think the best fit for him is like I said with James Reimer I think for Echo and the best fit is Nashville. The, the only real reason that Matthias Ekholm was ever on the market as big as he was was because Nashville was as bad as they were and he would help get them back if not the biggest, the second largest return for what they could offer to help rebuild the team. Now that they're in it, they're going to, they don't, they can't afford to get rid of him. And uh, I, I think that they need more players like Matias Ekholm in fact there to, to get themselves into a, you know, be, go from a, what looks like a good team again to a very good team. So Jackie, as it is right here, right now, I don't see him going anywhere. The rumor mill has Winnipeg, uh, it has Boston yeah. kicking tires. How about a team like Carolina? I know they're talking about a right shot D yeah. there, but could you imagine a, a guy like Ekholm going there as well? Like, holy smokes. But I don't see him going anywhere, yeah. so it's a lot of hot air for nothing. Yeah, I would just move on. I will point. say this. If Winnipeg can make it happen, he'd be a great fit for the Jets. Let's do one more. Yeah. Yes. All right. Like mixing All right, mixing them there. up, mixing them up, round and round she goes, where'd she dun, stop? Dun, dun. Oh, why? <laughs> 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 We're going to go with Mikhail Granlin, so we're sticking with oh. the same thing. Yeah, I'm going to pick a different pick one. A different one. Uh, pick let's a different do one. another one, do that's, another one. That's yeah. right. Pick a winner, come on, pick a winner. All right, well, you guys sort of touched on this player, but how about Nick Foligno? Yeah, well, listen, for me, I'll tell you what, he's a perfect fit for the New York Islanders for me. Big, strong, left-shot player, good in front of the net, could kind of fill some of the void that's been created by the injury to Andres Lee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's one of those guys, you can move him around the lineup, you can move him to the middle if you had to, he can play the wing. He's kind of a perfect veteran player for a Barry Trotz, Lou Lamarillo team. So if the Blue Jackets are going to move some of their free agents, if they feel like it's moving in the other direction this year, and this is a big guy to trade, too. He's your captain. He's been really one of the faces of this franchise and a terrific guy, too. We've had him on the show a number of times. Amazing leader. Like, he would bring so many intangibles to the Islanders. To anywhere he goes, but to the Islanders where that matters a lot. Last year, Billy, I thought that Pajot was a great fit for the Islanders because of the way they play. They went out and got him, and he's proven to be that. I think the same thing here. I think Nick Foligno is a perfect fit for the who the Islanders are as a team, but I just don't know if the Blue Jackets are willing to trade him at this point, even though his contract expires. Well, right. I mean, we're playing the game, yeah. right? We're making TV is what we're doing right here. So <laughs> we're pretending that yeah. he could be moved, right? Yeah. So how about this? Because I couldn't agree. Brother Ege, I couldn't agree more about the Islanders, all yeah. right? How about this one, though? The Minnesota Wild. The Minnesota Wild making a push. There's already another brother there. Yes, there I is. mean, you know, this could be something that would make it. Uh, I mean, Billy Guerin. I mean, I love Billy G. I, and, and I think that he's made some shrewd moves. We he talked has. earlier in the season about it. His team's done well. You add a leader like this to the mix to another leader. Uh, you know, you, you talk about, was it face offs there? I know he's a left wing, but he could maybe help yeah. a little. I, point is, I think there's a fit. I yeah. think that there is a fit there in Minnesota, so I wouldn't look past that. The other team I had marked down, and I'm going to fully admit, I don't remember, their, I'm, I'm blanking on their salary cap situation. Mm -hmm. What about St. Louis? Does St. Louis yeah. try and make a move to get something going to? But I, I think New York Islanders and Mini, that would be my top two. It'd be nice to see a guy like Nick Foligno go, like, go on a deep run in the postseason yeah. with, any, with whatever team. Whatever yeah, team. Yeah, it would be yeah. really cool. Uh, all right, I think we're, we're out of time for Bag of Puck.